What's up, guys? Rick from DFS On Demand here to tell you we did it. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you don't follow me on Twitter, here it is at the Masters. Uh, we took down the 100K birdie on DraftKings first place for $10,000. Um, I appreciate all the support. Lots of great comments. Uh, loved the sweat coming down the stretch on Sunday. Um, 606 points. D don't tweet me. I already know this lineup would have won the Millionaire Maker, would have tied for it. I'm aware. Um, I'm obviously happy with the 10,000. But what I wanted to do was, um, I wanted to do this anyway, but a lot of you guys reached out and said, hey, can you go through a video of what the thought process might have been, um, how you created lineups, and, um, you know, kind of what, what were you thinking to get there? So that's what this video is going to be about. Um, so while we before we do that, let's let's jump in here. Here's the lineup. Um, so this was a three dollar twenty max um, entry. So if you if you follow me before, you know I I am pretty strict in only playing tournaments that I'm going to max enter. Those tend to be a lot of single entries, um, twenty max, three max. I, I will occasionally throw some lineups in a millionaire maker, but I'm I'm usually not maxing it. Um, the reason for that, I, I, I usually don't play as high volume as a lot of guys because I make all my lineup, lineups by hand. Um, I, I'll show you that in a second, but I don't use an optimizer, so it kind of limits me into um, the types of tournaments that I can play because I, I really want to want to max enter them and I want to do it all myself. So we'll talk about how I do that, but here, here's the lineup. Um, it was, so I, I think I just read this. It was not the optimal lineup. It was the second most optimal lineup, so it basically would have won any tournament that, it, that was out there. Um, it had first, second, and third place. It had Reed, Spieth, and Fowler. Uh, we backed it up with with Bubba uh, T5, Charlie Hoffman T12, and Russ Henley T15. So obviously a really good lineup. We'll, we'll talk about it a little bit. Um, but just to give you a little story, like I, I had tweeted out on Friday. I, I knew this lineup was pretty good. I knew we had some bullets in it, but obviously it's pretty volatile. Um, started checking out the Masters coverage on Sunday. It was like the leaders were kind of getting to the back nine. I saw Russ Henley was five under. The second I turned the coverage on, I start tweeting it out. Charlie Hoffman makes an ace. Jordan Spieth birdies like his third or fourth hole in a row. And I'm like, all right, things are things are coming together here. So that's when I knew we really had a sweat. So appreciate you guys sweating it out with me. Um, let's, let's go through how I kind of came up with these guys. So, I mean, I, I talked about a lot of these guys on the preview video last week. I kind of went back and watched it. Um... But this is the this is the cheat sheet. So this is the cheat sheet I make every week. It's available on dfsondemand.com. That's my site. Um, it, it's where I do all of this. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's no surprise that we had that we had Jordan Spieth in a lot of lineups, right? I mean, he's absolutely dominated the Masters. Um, he was he was finally got things going uh, last week at, at the Houston Open or the previous week at the Houston Open with a third place. He he really charged up the leaderboard. We talked about him. Um, who was next? Oh, Bubba. Remember we talked about Bubba and we said, you know, the price is wrong here because he was priced before he won the match play because the Masters pricing comes out so early. So he was 16 to 1 to win, but only $8,700. So we thought he was a really good value. Um, Patrick Reed, we, we liked recently, uh, but I'll show you how I gained access to Patrick Reed because I didn't have a ton of him. Um, I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Who else did we have? Uh, Charlie Hoffman. So, uh, Hoffman has really good master success. He has choked down the stretch at times, uh, at Augusta, but you know, for, for only $7,100, again, you saw a man who was really, really underpriced. Vegas had him at 60 to one where the rest of his peers in this range are 100 to 300 to one to win. So he was really, really underpriced. Um, who else was it? Russ Henley. So we mentioned Russ Henley. Uh, we said he had, you know, back to back top twenties at this event, including an 11th place last year. And he got hot, um, last week with a top 10. He's a, he's a very volatile player, which is the type of player that we want in GPPs. Um, who was our other one? Oh, Fowler. He's going to be in a lot of lineups. Um, is that it? Yeah. Okay. So, oh, and then here's, here's the Millie maker one, right? So still 606 points. So same exact lineup. Okay. So how did I how did I do this? How did I make these lineups? I make them all by hand. Um, this was my exposure for the Masters. So it was basically 
What's that? 45 lineups across a handful of tournaments. Um, again, mostly ones that I can max enter, whether they're 20 maxes, three maxes, single entries, all that stuff. Um, the reason I like that, just to, not to go off on a huge tangent here, but you're, pre- you're at a pretty big disadvantage if you aren't max entering events. Um, there's a lot of bad things to say about DraftKings, but one of the good things you can say is they've done a, a lot better job of getting into single entries, 20 max, three max type events. Um, I still think they should be doing 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 max events. But if you're entering GPPs, which is exclusively what I play, you really need to be max entering um, or you're already at a disadvantage. So that's so that's what happens here. Um, and I create all these lineups by hand. So, so what you're seeing in this box here are the 20 lineups that I put into that 100K birdie. And then this is obviously the winning lineup right here. Okay. What you'll notice how I do this is I'll create a core of players or essentially like a single entry lineup. Like I'll make a lineup that I really like. Um, it tends to be a fairly safe lineup, conservative lineup. I'll make that core and then I will sub out each one of those players with other players in that price range um, so that I can get different exposure. So really what I did here, and you can see I did it a couple times. So this was lineup number one, uh, Paul Casey, Kucher, Rory, Hideki, Stenson, and Schwartzel. And then you'll see I go down and I swap Xander for Schwartzel. And I come over here and I swap, oh, actually I guess it was Louis for Stenson. And then I swap Fleetwood for Matsuyama. Then I swap Tiger for Rory, Cantlay for Kucher, and what was that, Bubba for Paul Casey. So... What that's allowing me to do is stick within my core, but also get access to other players that I normally would not. Okay, so when you start doing this on a, on a larger scale and you sub like three of these guys in each position, you take the guy that you want in your lineup, in your core, and then you take three guys also in that price range that you may have not may not have picked uh, otherwise. So it gives you the ability to tap into some of that volatility, right? So you know, there was a, there was a conversation on Twitter, like what were the indications to have Patrick Reed? Um, wh- why were we playing him? Well, he's been trending up, right? He, he did well at the, at the match play showed up uh, recently last week, but it's true. Like season long, there weren't a ton of indications that Patrick Reed was playing outside of his mind. Um, and you can see, I really only had, I think I had three total lineups with Patrick Reed in it, but it happened to be one where my core was awesome. Um, so here's the core that that kind of won it for me, right? It's Bubba, Spieth, Hoffman, Henley. It was Poulter and Ricky Fowler. Um, so you can see we swapped Casey for Fowler and had the rest of those guys. Then we put Fowler back in. Then we swapped Reed for Poulter. There's your ticket, right? There's the big one. Um, that's your winner. Then we swapped, swapped uh, Woodland for Henley with the rest of those guys. Kiradet for Charlie, Tiger for Jordan, and Paul Casey for Bubba Watson. So what this allowed me to do was stay within my constraints, within my core of guys I really, really liked, but also get access to guys I might not have played otherwise. Patrick Reed, Gary Woodland, Kiradet, uh, Effie Barnrat. I would have played Tiger, but I had less than, than the field on him, um, and Paul Casey, right? So that's a strategy you see kind of, it's almost like cascading through um, through this spreadsheet. So I make them all by hand and I, I really grind over these cores, right? Like the guys that are going to be in so many of my lineups is, is really what I'm grinding over. And then once I've decided on that, now I'm just doing this cascading effect and plugging in other guys that I might not normally play or just other similarly priced players. Um, so that's what I do. It worked. Um, it is a high risk, high reward style because I have so many lineups with all the same core. If that core doesn't hit, you're pretty much, you know, SOL, right? Um, it's very easy to tank a lot of lineups, but I'm, I'm willing to take on the high risk for the high reward. So I, I think I'm really good at grinding on core players. And then I gain access to Patrick Reed. I gain access to these guys that if they pop off, we get it. So obviously it takes a lot of luck to plug Patrick Reed into the lineup that had this great core. But I mean, this core of Spieth, Fowler, Henley, and Bubba, oh, and Charlie Hoffman was like five-sixths of the optimal lineup. So the core was very, very strong. 
And then one of the guys that we swapped into the core was the winner, um, which is why I do it, right? So that when Patrick Reed goes out and win it, wins it, I at least had a piece of it. So um, I know people ask me like, oh, did you have Patrick Reed in every single lineup? No, I had him in one um, or maybe two. No, I think I had him in one. Uh, but it was the right one because the core was the core was right. So I spent a lot of time grinding on the core and then sprinkling the rest of these guys. Um, that's basically about it. Uh, I mean, I give you I give you my thought process every single week. I'm 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 really appreciative to be able to do that. I'm really appreciative over the awesome comments I got on Twitter and everyone sweating with me and grinding with me down the stretch. And then when it was official, uh, kind of turned into celebration mode. So, um, really appreciate it. I tweeted out kind of like some, some cool stuff, uh, from that night. So if you want to check it out, um, it's at DFS on demand. Let me know if you have any questions about that. I'm obviously happy to, to continue to talk about this. So, uh, I'll talk to you guys soon and thanks.